hi everyone uh, welcome to sairam academy for yet another uh, neuro classroom class so today what we are going to see is very important tract a tract of lot of significance particularly for people who are treating pain the spinal thalamic tract um, is one of the very predominant ascending tract along with the posterior column tract which carries sensation from the periphery to the central nervous system in this presentation what we are going to peculiarly see is what is the difference between the pain processing and the other sensory processing like your other uh, sensory modalities and what is meant by a paleo and a neo spinothalamic tract what is the difference between these two okay and uh, one more thing what we are going to see is how cerebral cortex influences back the sensory perception first or uh, as always we normally do where does the tract arises from the origin the major mistake many of the students do here is when i ask them what is the origin of spinal thalamic tract immediately they say that it is the skin and the subcutaneous tissue where the sensory receptors are located is the origin of the spinal thalamic tract in fact that is wrong whenever you say tract tract means that is there in the spinal cord the information which are carried from the spinal cord to the central nervous system or from the central nervous system to the spinal cord are called as tract so your spinal thalamic tract invariably arises from the first fourth fifth and sixth laminae of the spinal cord so when i say this thing the information to this lamina are being carried from the periphery by means of the first order neuron which carry the information from the skin and touch temperature and uh, pressure sensory receptors which are located in the skin and the adjacent areas It carries information and conveys that directly into the spinal cord this is called as the first order neuron the nucleus for the first order neuron is located in the posterior root ganglion the other name for this is the dorsal root ganglion the information from the lower limb thighs and the lower abdomen pelvis all these in uh, region are carried by the lateral spinal thalamic tract you can see this the lateral division of the anterior lateral pathway the anterior lateral pathway is the other name given for the spinal thalamic tract because it has two portions the anterior portion and the lateral portion the lateral spinal thalamic tract carries the information from the Uh, lower limb and the adjacent areas and conveys that information to the higher centers whereas the anterior spinal thalamic tract carries the information from the upper limb neck head and upper trunk of the body so this is the uh, uh, difference between these two tracts and what we have to very clearly see is the information which is carried by the uh, first order neuron relays the information here and from here on the second order neuron starts and runs upwards the second order neuron carries the information from the posterior horn cells goes to the opposite side white column and takes a upward turn and the informations are conveyed upwards on the way to the uh, thalamus because this is a spinal thalamic tract so the informations will be uh, conveyed from the spinal cord to the thalamus on the way it also reaches the medullary um reticular formation you can see here this is the um, spinal thalamic tract communicating with the um, reticular formation both the medullary and the pontine reticular formation are being um, uh, uh, touched by these spinal thalamic tract okay so when i say first order second order and third order neuron this is applicable only for the ascending tracts when it comes to the descending tract we call them as the upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron so please remember this so don't say upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron for a sensory tract which is a common mistake people do in viva examinations okay so what what else we have to see now uh, where are these order neurons located so i'll track it from here on the Uh, first order neuron for the nociceptive stimulation is located in the posterior root ganglion and that ends in the posterior horn cells from here the second order neuron carries the information up and above and goes up to the thalamus okay from the thalamus the third order neuron starts and gives the information back to the uh, uh, sorry uh, conveys the information to the cerebral cortex so physiologically the first order neuron second order neuron are 
lot of they have lot of differences so i leave it to the audience to go and make the homework for that because that difference is going to clearly explain um, you about the pain transmission the uh, information is uh, uh, um, uh, relayed in the uh, some areas of the mesencephalon also this uh, relay um, relay is called as the spino mesencephalic tract here so the previous tract what we saw was the uh, spino reticular tract it's a small tract but still it has lot of significance okay so this is called as the mesencephalon and the spino thalamic junction so it is called as spino mesencephalic tract for your um, <clears throat> kind remembrance mesencephalon is nothing but the midbrain portion okay from here the information are relayed to the thalamus okay the second order neuron ends here what are the two nucleuses that are located in the uh, thalamus that are receiving information from the spinal thalamic tract that is your interlaminar nucleus and the ventrobasilar nucleus are the two nucleuses that receives the information from the spinal thalamic tract from here the third order neuron starts and goes to the cerebral cortex okay it, it relays in the somatosensory region the primary sensory cortical region is the one which receives the information from the spinal thalamic tract okay so now next what we are going to see is the function this tract carries the information of normally when we studied the uh, we see this touch temperature pressure and pain now you can also include the sexual sensation because the touch can be discriminated uh, touch can be discriminated as a normal touch and a touch with sexual intentions so uh, that is also carried by this particular tract what happens in case of dysfunction of this tract these sensory modalities are um, uh, obstructed from transmission into the consciousness so the person will lose his uh, superficial sensation so how will be the sensory loss will it be on the opposite side or will be on the same side that is a matter of discussion because the location of the lesion determines whether it is going to be on the same side or the opposite side in case if there is a lesion of the brain or the brain stem the sensory loss is going to be on the opposite side whereas if this is on the spinal cord level uh, again there also you will have the opposite side sensory loss but on the same side there will be a small portion of the sensation compromised this is because we saw that the spinal cord uh, in the spinal cord this uh, spinal tract crosses to the opposite side immediately after entering into the spinal cord but uh, diagrammatically for a better understanding this is represented like this but um, what happens practically is this tract do not crosses to the opposite side immediately after entering into the spinal cord level for example if uh, the spinal nerve l5 enters at the least level of spinal segment l5 it remains on the same side up to l4 and l3 Uh, at the lower end of the L3 or at the upper end of L4 only it crosses to the opposite side then only it ascends on the opposite side the portion for which it remains on the same side is called as the tract of leisure so the when there is a spinal cord injury at the level of L5 there is also a portion of the same side sensory loss that is expected that is because the spinal thalamic tract do not crosses immediately after entering into the spinal cord please go and read into tract of leisure and also this is a very important uh, clinical significance for people who are working with spinal cord injury because this helps them sometimes to identify where is the level of lesion okay so look into the same side sensory loss in case of a spinal thalamic tract lesion so what we are going to see next is how there is a difference between pain relaying mechanism and the relay mechanism of the other sensory modalities the major difference here is the sensation of pain is relayed predominantly into the reticular formation and the remaining is relayed into the interlaminar nucleus of the thalamus whereas the other sensory modalities are not relayed into the um, reticular formation it is relayed predominantly in the uh, ventrobasilar nucleus of the uh, thalamus okay so this can be explained 
um, by means of why pain can wake you up because when somebody is giving you pain uh, this goes to the reticular formation which is the center which uh, uh, which is very essential when you are sleeping which is the one which switch off your uh, um, uh, your perception uh, when you are sleeping it, it shut down almost all the sensory inputs so pain can invariably wake you up from uh, sleep um, so that's why whenever somebody is touching you or uh, when you are touching warmth or when you are feeling normal cold when you are sleeping you are not getting up from the uh, sleep uh, otherwise if every sensory information is relayed into the uh, reticular formation you would uh, you would be awake for each and every tactile sensation that goes from the periphery even the touch of the bed could wake you up invariably this is a god's gift uh, but this pain sensation is related to the reticular formation mainly because here what we have to perceive is uh, in case if you are sleeping, uh, if, you, if you are having some hazard, this reticular activating system should be alerted and you should be awake, one thing. Second thing is the reticular activating system maintains your alertness, alert levels and conscious levels. Even when a person is uh, awake, he should be very conscious about the pain. Okay, so this is the reason, uh, this is the... Um, uh, relay mechanism difference between the other modalities and the pain modality. Now we are going to see what is the role of the thalamus. Here, thalamus is a sensory integrating center. It relays every information to the cerebral cortex after filtering because invariably all the sensory information like your touch, temperature, pressure, your deep sensation, your visual sensation, your auditory sensation, you are taste sensation all these sensation except your olfactory sensation reaches into the thalamus then only it is being relayed to the cerebral cortex so what invariably thalamus does is what are all the sensory information that is essential right now for the person will be sent to the cerebral conscious level remaining sensations will be cut off at the level of the thalamus so that is the important thing for example if you are listening to a very important class what happens is the, uh, the uh, teacher's voice will always be transmitted to the cerebral cortex and the remaining noise and all other visual inputs will be cut off at the level of thalamus. So that is the role of the thalamus. And finally, what we are going to see is the corticofugal signals. These informations are carried uh, from the periphery to the central, but in turn, the cerebral cortex sends out some information down to these areas like your thalamus and the reticular formation and the brainstem region. Uh, and this information is always inhibitory in nature. What this inhibitory um, signal does is it invariably maintains the alertness level of the individual, maintains the sensitivity of the sensory information. If there is a cut wound in a person, for example, this information travels to the cerebral cortex and cerebral cortex in turn sends information to maintain <coughs> these uh, systems at an optimal level. Either the system should not panic or the system should not take it so lightly. Uh, there will be pain, but the pain should not go beyond certain limit that the system collapses. And also, it should not have a, um, what to say, an ignorant attitude towards that cut injury. So there should be an optimal response to any pain mechanism that is taken care by the corticofugal signals. The cerebral cortex is very aware about that. Fine. So there are a lot of mechanisms that are involved in pain perception and uh, the physiology of pain. We are coming up with those presentation after finishing this basic physiology. Um, about the uh, neo and the paleo spinothalamic tract, we are coming up with in the next video because of uh, the length of the video, uh, I would like to present it in the next class. But these two tracks, the neo and the paleo are very, very important when understanding the pain mechanism, why there is a, a difference between acute pain and a chronic pain, because there is difference between the relaying mechanism of these two uh, pain sensations, acute pain and the chronic pain. So thank you so much, my dear friends, uh, for being with us. And please like and subscribe our uh, channel. Please spread this information to others also. Thank you so much. See you in the next presentation. Bye.